Welcome everybody. Today we are going to uh, repair the stack assembly on an ESV. Uh, in this particular case we have a 3SV and we've got a brand new repair stack 3SV R60. So the documentation for this repair stack installation starts with repair stack installation manual, instruction manual, and it's the IM235. And the R after that has to do with uh, revision, and this happens to be revision three. So you'll notice here that you may also need the regular installation manual for the ESV, and that is your IM228. Let's look at some of the equipment that you're going to need to do a repair stack um, installation. And also, um, we are going to put a new seal in there. So the first is a, uh, the proper cut resistant glove. And the reason is because some of these components, uh, like the bowls, uh, can be sharp. So we may have to reach in there and grab that. Um, if you do that, you definitely need cut resistant gloves for that. Uh, next is a 19 millimeter socket or a wrench um, to take the bolts off. Need a basic Phillips head screwdriver to take our coupling guards off. For that coupling itself, you need a six millimeter uh, hex. This happens to be a ball end hex. And then for the seal, um, one um, lubricant that we use uh, in Seneca Falls is P80, and that's for assembly lube. And so we've got a little bit of that here for the seal install. And not a bad idea to have some alcohol pads in case you get your uh, fingerprints on the seals. Uh, you can always wipe those clean with a basic alcohol pad. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take the coupling guard off. Uh, there's a coupling guard on each side and we just need a Phillips head screwdriver to take those off. You notice too that uh, inside the coupling guard, there is a seal replacement uh, set of instructions. Uh, and one is English and then the other is Spanish. So we can see the other side has the instructions in Spanish. Let's just take a minute and talk about uh, the arrows because sometimes that leads to some confusion. Uh, you can see here that we have an arrow on the coupling, an arrow on the motor adapter, and an arrow on uh, the, the base. So notice here that we have uh, two different directions. So basically, uh, these two are rotation arrows. So we want to make sure that the rotation is following the arrow. All right, so notice these two are the same rotation. This arrow here is flow. And so we can see here that on the left is my input and on the right is my discharge or suction and discharge on the right. Next is uh, we're going to remove this, this coupling. So notice that the coupling is two parts. They're made as a set and meant to go together. And so all we got to do is get the six millimeter wrench and we're going to remove these bolts and there's a nut in the back. So one thing that you'll notice is the top is a, is a compression fit and then the bottom has a pin. So one thing we got to be careful of is when we take these out, uh, we also just make sure we grab the pin and we want to make sure that that gets reinstalled. Next we're going to remove this seal gland or seal plate. Again, you need a six millimeter, and um, so we're gonna go with, with the Allen here.
So one thing that we'll notice here is we have a, uh, a portion of the seal, and this is the stationary portion uh, of your mechanical seal, and inside we have the rotary section attached to the shaft. So next we're going to remove the rotary portion of the seal. In this case, it uh, may be a little easier than uh, a seal that's been in there for a while, but uh, you just got to pry that up, maybe two screwdrivers uh, if need be. So you just got to take that out because we're going to put a new seal back in here. So next we're going to remove the nuts on the motor adapter. Okay, so now that we have the, the four uh, nuts, uh, we have to remove the motor and motor adapter from the pump itself. Certainly for that, that is a horse and a half motor. Uh, for your larger motors, um, you know, you certainly may need a crane. So now that we have the motor and the motor adapter off, we need to remove the stack. So it may take a little bit of persuasion, uh, depending on how long it's been in service, but this plate comes off. So you're going to need to get this off. And now with the stack, um, you may have to just wiggle that back and forth. Wiggle that back and forth. Eventually you'll be able to pull that out. And more than likely, what's going to happen is the bottom bowl is going to be stuck, right? So we've got most of it out, but we've got to get that bottom bowl out. So this may require some pliers um, to pull that thing out. A, a good place to have, have gloves, cut-resistant gloves, uh, but you've got to get that bowl out of there. So now the entire stack, old stack, has been removed. So let's take a look at our repair stack. And this is a kit. So we can see the first thing that you get is the repair stack installation manual uh, that we talked about earlier. So you get the repair stack, as we can see. You get the shim tool, which we're gonna need that with the re, uh, reinstall, the repair. And you also get uh, this box here full of O-rings and a mechanical seal. So here's a mechanical seal. Uh, we'll put this in in a minute. Well, let's talk about the O-rings. So we have two O-rings here, and these are your casing O-rings, right? One top, one bottom. So uh, good idea just to use new ones. Uh, can't go wrong with that. So notice the third O-ring is smaller. And that is for your seal gland seal plate um, here. So go ahead and put your new O-ring on your seal gland or seal plate. Now let's reverse the order. So we're going to take our uh, complete repair stack and we're going to make sure that is uh, fully seated uh, in the bottom. This may require a little bit of persuasion, um, but you got to make sure that bowl is seated on the bottom. Okay, so now that we've got our repair stack fully seated, we're going to put our plate back on. Now we've got to put the motor and motor adapter uh, back on. You've got to line up your four bolts. And from that point, uh, we've got to put our washers and our nuts. And we want to tighten those up uh, evenly. There is a torque spec in the book. So we want to look at that. Uh, we also want to do the, the star pattern. Uh, tighten those nuts up evenly and to the torque spec in the book. So next is the mechanical seal installation. And as we saw earlier, the mechanical seal comes with a stack kit. 
So uh, here's our mechanical seal uh, in this case. So this is our uh, rotating face that goes on the shaft and comes with a little piece of cardboard here that separates these two for shipment. And this is our stationary face here, you can see uh, with an O-ring. So we're gonna, we're gonna install a new mechanical seal. So the first thing that you wanna do, uh, notice that we didn't uh, pop out that old mechanical seal stationary face. So easiest way to do that is just flip that over, pop that out from the back side. So now that we've got that popped out, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to install the stationary portion of the seal. So here's our stationary portion here. And so you do want to minimize touching the seal faces. And uh, one sort of nice thing about this little piece of cardboard that comes with the seal, you can use that. To, to press it in. And uh, we're gonna wipe off the faces uh, at the end anyway. So we're gonna use a little bit of P80 to lubricate just that, just gonna lubricate just a little bit uh, of the bore. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use that little piece of cardboard Two fingers, right? Two fingers, press it in, and you want to make sure that that is pressed in evenly. So you can just do a visual and make sure that that's pressed in all the way and evenly. And notice that uh, it does not sit flush. So that looks pretty good. So next we're gonna lubricate the shaft and install the rotary portion of the shaft. Again, we happen to have P80 here. So just want a little bit, couple drops, and we wanna lubricate that shaft. So again, we want to minimize touching the seal face. So we're just gonna press that down. Make sure it seats all the way. Okay, next, we want to take our seal plate and we want to carefully uh, position that over the shaft, making sure that we don't chip that, that seal. So take your time on that and uh, don't rush it and make sure that we don't chip that on the install because a chip is going to mean that we're, it's going to leak. So now all we have to do is take the four bolts, again, tighten down evenly, and we'll be done with that portion. Okay, so again, we wanna tighten these uh, evenly, do the cross pattern, uh, follow the torque spec in the catalog. Next, uh, we're going to install the, the coupling. And a couple things to keep in mind, the, the top is a compression fit for the motor shaft, and the pump shaft uh, has a pin. So we've got to make sure that we put the pin back in. So the other thing that's important about your coupling, we can see where the hex goes and the round section here where the head of the, the bolt would go. All right, we can see another round section over here. So we've got that pin. It's 
going to put the bolts in first. So now we'll put the nuts on. So we're going to want to make sure that we just put this on loosely. So now that we've got the the uh, nuts and in, in the bolts back in, we got to make sure it's loose because it needs to be able to slide up and down the pump shaft. And the reason is um, because we need to set the height of the stack. And uh, that's what this uh, shim tool is for. This is the perfect height here to set that uh, properly and we put that under the coupling. Notice here that this is meant for three different shaft sizes. And uh, in this particular case, with the 3SV, uh, we have the smallest shaft size. So that means we need to make sure we install this shim so that it fits all the way into this section here. So you got to find a nice flat spot and make sure that's pressed in and really grabs on uh, to the shaft. So what you may need to do is just lift it up slightly and then press your shim in. So now that we've got the shim all the way in, we've set the stack height properly. In other words, uh, those impellers have been raised just enough so that we got proper clearance. Now really the next step is you want to make sure that you tighten the coupling evenly. Not only top to bottom, but side to side. So you want to make sure that in the end, this gap here on both sides is even. So we're going to do that. We're going to tighten these four bolts and we're going to make sure that we've got a nice even top to bottom and side to side gap. We've tightened all four bolts. We're going to double check our gap top to bottom, top to bottom on both sides, and then we're going to check both gaps and make sure they're even. They look pretty good. And don't forget to take your shim out. So at the end, remove your shim, double check your coupling, make sure it spins nice and free. There's no rubbing, there's no grinding, and you should be in good shape. The last thing we're going to do is put the coupling guards back on. So that wraps up a stack change and a seal change for the 3SV. Uh, hopefully that was helpful. Um, any additional questions, give us a call. Look us up on Goulds.com. Thanks for watching.